In this video, I'm deliberately contaminating my hands with a liquid radioactive substance, a 5 megabakerel of technetium 99M in a vial. This, however, will result in virtually zero whole body dose and just a minor dose to the fingers, as about 60 megabakerel direct directly injected into your bloodstream would only result in a dose of 1 millisievert, and this is uh, a total. Uh, activity of 5 megabicarel in a little vial and a tiny tiny fraction ends up on my hands and almost nothing ends up in my body so it's pretty much safe but I do not recommend that anybody tries this especially not with other liquid radioactive substances like um, a liquid standard of cesium-137 for example so um, well I'm just checking out how easy it is to contaminate yourself and what is best done immediately after having a radioactive substance on your hands in order to prevent a larger amount of contamination. Currently I'm just measuring my uncontaminated finger to have an actual background value. And let's speed things up a bit. I always do one minute measurements. So once I've found out the background value, I can actually proceed to contaminating my finger with the liquid radioactive substance, technetium 99M. Here's a quick look at the stuff. You can see uh, the little vial where I'll be sticking my fingers in in order to contaminate my hands. And then decontaminate them as good as possible. So let's see how that works out. All right then, let's go. Here's the vial and my finger, my right index finger will be the first to be contaminated. I think this video bit was the one minute contamination, so I'm letting my finger soak in the liquid standard for about one minute. And then I see just how great the uptake was to the upper layers of the skin. So, same setup, my finger in front of the Gaia Miller tube, one minute measurement. And, well, you can clearly see that we have a lot more counts now, which is visible and audible. So set another one minute measurement, so let's speed things up a bit. And then, yeah, we're nearing 1000 counts a minute. That's significantly more than before, but it just wiped my hands. I didn't wash them, I just wiped them. So, proceeding. After decontaminating them, I will get to get back to that later. And now I'm just doing a very short contamination and I will proceed doing this in different fashions for uh, my fingers. For, how many did I do? I can't remember, maybe six or so. And we'll see how much time matters and how much the procedure in actually getting it off and decontaminating yourself matters. So yeah, you can see another measurement. That was just a very short soaking time. And you can see that the counts are just about half. Otherwise, same stuff, but just half the counts for a very short soaking time. As expected, but now we know the actual numbers. And what's actually also funny to see, of course, is with the scintillation counter, the borehole detector, you can see if I stick in an uncontaminated finger, hardly picks up anything. Contaminated finger, that was just in there for a short time, yeah, picks up something. And badly contaminated finger, that's gonna be a lot of counts. And, and these are the results. What you can see in this neat little graph is that if you let your fingers soak in the substance for a really long time, it's the worst stuff you can do. You can see after three minutes, we had way over 1000 counts, 1100 counts. Um, if it's just soaking for 10 seconds and you just wipe it off uh, for the three minutes as well as for the 10 seconds, you still have yeah a little less than half of the total uptake. However, it's best of course to uh, keep the contamination very short and then rinse it with water. If you rinse uh, the, the contamination with water immediately, it's gonna provide a much better decontamination. 
But also it's important to immediately use soap because if you immediately use soap after rinsing, then the uh, decontamination is actually much better than if you just use water and probably measure yourself again if you're still contaminated and then use soap. That's going to provide a much, much worse decontamination than if you just immediately use soap. So the best decontamination procedure is actually to get the stuff off your hands as quick as possible. Wiping is better than nothing, but rinsing and using soap and water again for two times in a row provides the best decontamination. So uh, if you're contaminated, if you have your hands contaminated, don't just wash them with water and measure them again or wash them with soap a single time and measure them again. Immediately go and wash them with soap thoroughly two times before even first measuring yourself for contamination because that definitely uh, lowers the remaining contamination on your hands the best. This goes for a liquid standard of TC99M uh, Mac 3 but it probably also goes for other uh, liquid standards uh, even if they're not in the same chemical uh, chemical category as this one which was actually a slightly acidic solution. What you can see here is the decay curve over 24 hours as recorded by the Gamma Scout. Uh, the green lines are the actual measurements from the Gamma Scout with little fluctuations, uh, statistical fluctuations around that red line which is the perfect uh, exponential function, the decay curve that is to be expected. And what is also interesting to note is that from uh, the first measuring point on my finger as to the last measuring point on my finger, which I did the next day as well, it follows the exact same exponential curve that is expected due to solely the physical half-life of technetium 99M. So this suggests that uh, once the contamination is done, uh, very few, if anything, uh, gets taken up into the bloodstream and very few, if anything, uh, rubs off any sur on any surfaces. So once, once the hands are contaminated and have been decontaminated as good as possible, then there's pretty much nothing you can do unless you, well, scrub your skin off or something, but that is strongly advised against, of course. It would also facilitate uh, the uptake into the bloodstream, so never do this. And yeah. Well, it's quite interesting. As you can see, it just pretty much stays into the finger until it's either decayed or, for uh, the, the case of longer half-life substances, it will uh, just stay there until the skin layers are uh, removed by natural growth of the skin. So, please don't repeat this experiment, especially not with long-lived radioactive substances or substances that have a biological significance. And thanks for watching, as usual.